I got a package. Can you guess what's inside here just by the title of the video? Hey everyone, how's it going? So yes, I have a package. So let's go ahead and open it and that'll be the start of the video here. Wow, cool space here. Not the best packaging. Now this is used. It came with one cable. <laughs> it even came with a riser, that's funny. Okay, so what we got here is a used, oh my God, like Dust Bunny style, A2000. And you would think, I actually bought this for mining, but, what? oh my God, that's a generic. I think I have a few of these from Amazon or something like that originally, but it did come with one um, micro, what was that, micro DV, DVI? Yeah, micro. Oh, sorry, micro DP to uh, full size. It actually has four of them. Anyway, A2000. Um, you would think I bought this for mining, but actually no. And God, they beat the heck out of this freaking thing. I think this is going to go into test bench first. Just so I can make sure it's okay. Holy Jesus. Well, at least they haven't done the shunt mod. I definitely wanted a stock one for what we're doing. No, this is not going to be used for mining, mining Caspa, anything, Nexa, whatever. For once, I bought a GPU because I need to upgrade my Plex server. So first off, let's clean all this freaking... Does this turn? Okay, good. It does turn. Let's clean all this crap out of here and put it on the test bench and see if it even works. This is what I get for buying used. So I got the fan pretty much cleaned up, but yeah, inside, definitely got some more to clean up here. <laughs> oh my God, even inside the fan shroud too. Oh my God, if I take the fan off, I thought I had it clean. Nope, look inside there. All that junk and schmutz inside there too. Let me keep cleaning. Okay. Finally got the shroud and the fan. Pretty freaking clean now. And I literally did not want to turn this into an A2000 cleaning video. But at the same time, if I can get the right amount of light here, there's a ton of oil and grease and stuff built up here on the bottom. Let me see if I can get a light. Yeah, that does not look good down in there. All the pads have been leaking. This has had a really hard service life and some miner in California. Dude, take care of your stuff. Um, so before even testing it, I probably should have tested it first, but we're this far, we might as well go ahead and repad and repaste. So let me go ahead and let's just tear it down the rest of the way. Okay, well, at least that part's assembled. We don't have to worry about it now. Yeah, that's factory, all right. And those pads are definitely looking uh, tired. So yeah, we're gonna put some new pads and paste on here. Okay, so I got it all cleaned up. You can see the heat sink over here. And we got new pads on here. GPU riser is one and a half millimeter. So let's get some uh, thermal paste onto the die itself and get this reassembled. Yes, I'm a stickler for even coatings. I don't just put a bead down. That's just me. So. Got good squish and uh, good dye contact in there. And there we go, all cleaned up. Still banged the ever loving heck out of it, but hey, it should work now. Fan moves nice and clean. Uh, let's put this on the test bench and throw some Casper on it for a few minutes, just so I can say I mined on it before I throw it into the Plex server. And to make sure that it just didn't just waste 20 minutes of my time revamping this card without testing it. Okay, so we got it running. It's mining Ergo for the time being. Had a little bit of a problem and had to have uh, a consultant, Yeti. You guys know Yeti. Yeah, he had to help me uh, troubleshoot this a little bit. But apparently, for some reason, the card was having issues with risers. It wasn't HiveOS install or a driver version. As soon as I put it in the 16X slot on the motherboard on my test bench, the thing would give me memory temperatures. It would show me fan speeds. Even the cheap one that it originally came with would work a little bit more. My other one that I have mounted here 
it just wouldn't do it for some reason. But as soon as I plugged it into the 16X slot, it's running beautifully. So the temperature is running ergo, because this way I can test the core and the memory fairly well. 56C on the core, 86C on the memory. Uh, the fan's running at about 100% and we're only pulling 69 watts. So this card is good and ready to go into my Plex server. Okay, so I got the server pulled out right now. Let me get the top off first. Now this is a Super Micro 846 case, so it does have 24 bays up front, but it does not have a Super Micro motherboard in here. This is a 10700K CPU running with a SAS uh, controller card for all 24, plus this is my cache drive on Unraid. So I have one extra 16X slot here, which is electrically four. I think I'm gonna drop both of these cards down and this way I can have 8X on the SAS controller and then 8X on the A2000. So give me a few seconds, let me uh, jostle a few things around here. And there we go. We got the A2000 in the first X16 slot, which will be X8, shared with the second slot, which is my SAS controller, and then the third is my cache drive right here, two terabyte um, NVMe PCIe cache drive. So let's button this all back up and get back in the Unraid and get this thing working on Plex transcoding. Okay, so everything started up perfectly fine. The NVIDIA card works. There are a few things you need to do for Plex. I was originally using the iGPU in my 10700K to do transcoding and it just can't keep up with multiple 4K streams anymore. So that's why we're switching over to the A2000. So the first thing you need to install before you do anything is the NVIDIA, NVIDIA, NVIDIA driver, no, no dash, click on that, and this first one right here, which I have installed now. Now once you install this, you got to follow the instructions and it will tell you to stop all your Docker service and then turn it back on. That's the first step. Now the second step, what I did, I like to lock it down to a certain version, so after that's installed, we go settings and you'll see down here, NVIDIA driver. Click on that. Normally it runs on the latest driver, which at the time of making this video is version 530.41.03. I've noticed at least from mining that 525.85.05 works perfectly fine. And there probably won't be any reason to constantly sit there and update. So I told it to change over to this driver by clicking the radio button, clicking update and download. It downloaded it and then it asked me to restart on RAID itself so that new driver can come into effect. Now that this is locked into a certain driver and it won't update, now we're going to shoot on over to the Plex container, Docker container, do a few edits there real quick. So if we go down here and edit, what we're going to do, you're going to make sure you're on an advanced view. And if you're on iGPU, you reached, you had something else in here that said uh, device equals dev DRI. We're going to switch that and put it in a double dash runtime equals NVIDIA. This information is actually right above here. So you're just going to copy that down in the extra parameters. Then we're going to scroll down and you should have an option on here that says NVIDIA visible devices. And all you have to put in here is all. Update your container and you're set to go. Now, if you also want to see all this nice little bits of information down here at the bottom, tells me NVIDIA RTX A2000, what PCI gen speed it's running at and how many lanes, the load memory, the encoder, decoder, GPU memory, fan power, PCI bus, transmit megabits back and forth, what power state it is, is what app is using it, all that good stuff. Also, go back to apps And let's search GPU statistics. You're going to go ahead and install this program right here. Get in there. Actions. Settings. And right up top here, we're going to set vendor for NVIDIA. Unit ID, you're going to pull down and find, in this case, the A2000. Switch it to Fahrenheit or Celsius, depending upon what you feel like it. Update once every 
a uh, thousand milliseconds or one second. Then for multiple vendors, I just set everything to yes. NVIDIA specific, everything to yes. Then Intel and AMD specific, everything to no. And then it will give you this information down here on the bottom of your dashboard. Now, how does it work in transcoding? Actually, it is transcoding right now. I have a video playing in the background. Actually, okay, there's multiples running now. If I push over a little bit more, I'm locally playing a 4K video, which had problems transcoding on the iGPU. No problems. Went to, from transcoding to throttle in like three seconds. Uh, someone else is also streaming, no problems. The transcode speed um, is, instead of being like four or five, it's like 16 to 20. This one's already throttled as well too. No problems whatsoever. So the A2000 is great for budget transcoding. Instead of getting the uh, old P2000s or P4000s that used to be popular a couple years ago with Plex. The A2000, perfect. So thanks for watching. Thumbs up, please. Comments down below. And I will catch you on the next video.